test. I can't find my mic adapter, so. Today I thought we could make fun of some reptiles. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to do a video on the Abronia, but I didn't know what to talk about it with. So I'm gonna show it in this video. If you didn't know the Abronia is this little cute tiny lizard, but it seems surprisingly intelligent. So I wanna talk about like how intelligent it seemed, but instead of just talking about that one, I thought we could just rate all the lizards in the room from dumbest to smartest. <laughs> I'm not talking species wise, like we know like tegus are smarter than monitors, which are smarter than beardies or whatever, but I just mean individually. You'll get what I mean in a minute. I'm just sitting because it's easier to show the animals. <laughs> and it just proved my point. Um, this is our 10 year old Beardy. We got him from somebody that was no longer able to keep him. So he feels too old to rehome. For now, we're just gonna keep him ourselves. Uh, unfortunately, he's gonna have to go on the far side of the spectrum. He doesn't seem very smart. Now, maybe it's just because he's old. I know, I need to learn some respect. <laughs> So the question is, what is he bobbing at? I don't know, he always bobs. It doesn't matter where you are, what room you're in, he just bobs. On my Instagram story, he was bobbing at like a light bulb or lamp or something. Of course, he'll bob at other lizards if he can see them. He can't see other lizards right now. Um, I'd purposely separated like where the enclosures are so they can't see each other and he's still going. Okay, so now I actually can see the other lizard and there's one over there that's bobbing back at him. He didn't see it before, the lizard came up. Um, he bobs all the time. I feel so weird sitting at a table. I can't get over it. So yeah, this is his life now, just bobbing 24-7. Maybe he's like super intelligent, maybe he's like interacting with some like multi-dimensional creature and he's actually the smartest in the room, but based on what I can tell, now he's waving. He looks like he's swimming. <laughs> Look at him swim. <laughs> but from what I can tell, he's just senile and he probably has schizophrenia. <laughs> I'll stop making fun of him. So I'm putting him at the bottom of the line here. Next up on the list has to go lepra geckos. Now here's the thing, they don't do anything that makes me think like, that gecko's kind of dumb. <laughs> but they don't do anything in general. They just wander around and look at stuff. Like right now she's not even doing anything. Like what can I get her to do that's interesting for the camera? I don't know. Um, she walks, she eats. Same with Goldie, I have two leopard geckos now. A cool video is coming with them. We're making them a really nice enclosure, so that's in the works. They're not being cohabbed, but yeah. And if you hear all that background noise, it's the bearded dragon getting really angry and who knows what. He can't see any other animals. See, look, so right now he's on this 40 on the floor. A 40 is a bit small, but it's what he's in right now. And he can't, he can't see anything. There's walls everywhere, like solid walls. He can't see through them. He's not okay. Schizophrenia, I'm telling you. Okay, anyway, back to making fun of our reptiles. Um, <laughs> like I said, leopard geckos, there's not much to say about them. They, uh, they really don't do much. They just wander around. They live their life. They look around. They don't seem really aware. Like, they look aware but it doesn't look like they're thinking about what they're seeing they just look around and they're like there's a thing there's another thing i, I would like to see leopard geckos in the wild to see just how smart they are whether they can actually outsmart other animals or maybe it's just because they're crepuscular and have um, camouflage and they just stand at people's people's way animals ways or maybe they're just masterminds too what what do i know maybe they're all like uber smart maybe i'm the dumbest in the room i know what a lot of you are gonna answer <clears throat> Oh. Fun fact, I didn't come up with this list beforehand. I'm just coming up with it as I go. <laughs> this is Bonnabelle. I'm gonna do an update on her soon. Hopefully this week. Oh my. Hole in one! So this is Bonneville, my Savannah monitor. Um, I think I'm gonna throw it. The reason I'm putting her third and not at the bottom <laughs> is because she's very clever. Um, she's not very smart when it comes to understanding what will and won't hurt her. 
but that's just instinct. So you can't really get angry at that most of the time. However, she truly is clever. She is a pro at waiting for just the perfect moments for running away. Like if she's say in a bath for whatever reason, she just waits for that moment, which by the way, she's shedding again. I swear, this is literally the third video where she's shedding because she sheds like all the time. It's just a constant flow of shed. I think I said that exact same quote in the last video. But say you're bathing her, she'll like be angry and irritated and that poop smell is so strong, be so glad you're not in this room. I'm like gonna start crying because it smells so bad. <laughs> she'll calm down and she'll convince you that she's asleep. As soon as you move, she just sprints and jumps and she is across the room. Now the problem is where she doesn't come in as smart is she does the same thing every time. She just sprints and waits and sprints and waits and it doesn't improve. If you ask me, it's not very smart, but who am I to say? It's, see, like, as you can see now, she's actually calm. Um, I think she's also out of breath from like using this table as a treadmill. It was pretty impressive. Probably got a good workout like that, but, but she really seems to forget every single time that nothing's trying to kill her. And, Cause even now, I don't know, her eyes look only mildly terrified instead of completely. Um, and I've had her for a year and a half, almost daily handling. I haven't handled her daily like the past month or so, but uh, before that it was extremely frequent handling, or not even handling, just like interaction, not just straight picking her up. Uh, even though I have found that just handling has been the most effective. She reminds me of like a arboreal day gecko or something that's just not, quote, supposed to become tame. That's just a display pet. And I, I expected that one getting in a monitor. Uh, I've done a few videos on her, so those are cool to check out. But she's third on the list and I have to clean this table. Next up on the list at fourth or whatever we're on, I put in the other bearded dragon. If you didn't know, I finally caved in. I got a bearded dragon. This is one we got from Craigslist. Originally we were gonna sell it, but uh, I ended up snatching him myself. He's one of the sweetest lizards in the room for sure. Uh, like admittedly the male is pretty sweet sometimes to people. He's sweet to pretty much anything that isn't another breed of dragon. And luckily they haven't realized the other breed is on the floor. They haven't noticed that they can like see each other yet. So we'll see how calm he is. His breed was even blacker before when I had the other beardy out. But uh, I put three animals between the two beardies. <laughs> so if you ask me, although of course there's generalizations and there's like different brains and animals are developed differently where you can see and essentially break down just how, quote, smart they are. But I did have to separate the two beardies with some other animals. Like I said, it might be because of age and I don't know, maybe even previous husbandry, who knows. But this one is more of what I would call your generic bearded dragon, mentally speaking. He's calm, he sits there, he trusts you and other people. He understands how to like eat normally. <laughs> And he's quite the observer. I don't know, he's very calm, he's chill, he's quiet. He's like the introvert of lizards, I feel. Even right now, he just always looks pretty satisfied. He closed one of his eyes. Well, not the other one though. And he just seems to be so content with everything. So maybe that means that his mind is just like numb. Like he just hears like white static all the time. Or maybe it means that he's so observant, he's just absorbing everything and understanding everything around him. I have no idea. I'm basically making all this up. Why is this even a video? Also, eye contact feels like a very strong thing with a lot of animals. Obviously, eye contact can mean like aggression or something like bad with a lot of species and certain reptiles too, but I don't know. It's like you make eye contact with him and he, he just knows that you're another being that's just existing along him and he's like so zen. And this is turning more into just a random reptile room than like actually ranking them because I'm just talking about the personalities now. Honestly, I might even be able to keep him on the table as long as I don't bring other beauties. See, like, look, I just slid him over. He didn't even care. He didn't move back or anything. He's just, okay, I'm here now. It's fine, who cares? So we're at our last two animals here and I had kind of had trouble picking from the two, but I decided to put this one as the runner up. Uh, there are more lizards in the room. I'm not including all of them, I'm just including the highlights. And this is a green iguana that we got recently that doesn't really like people. However, as you probably know, iguanas in general are just extremely intelligent and once completely tame and calm and used to people, is very different from the average lizard and I am bleeding so much. Not to mention their claws are just so sharp. And their tail 
especially when they get full size, is painful. So right now it's not that bad, but I can't imagine how it'll be in the future. Which is why we really want to tame this guy down. <laughs> Poor girl, I can't remember now. He's certainly near the top. He is really good at faking you out. That's probably my favorite thing, is when he fakes you out before he attacks. He like, like in a way, kind of how a bearded dragon bobs, or how like, even a person will fake somebody out. He does the same thing. He didn't fake me out that time, but he does sometimes. Where he just wants to intimidate you and he knows that you don't even have to do it to convince you that he's in charge or whatever. Which unfortunately doesn't work because we have to keep handling him <laughs> until he's comfortable. He certainly, whenever you come to the room, he's the very first to notice you. Admittedly, he has like the biggest enclosure and the most view of anything, but the other breeders might not even notice, but he's just always paying attention. I wouldn't even say on edge, but just always aware of what's going on. And there's so much noise in the background, it's the beardy, so angry. It's the old one, still. He's bobbing at us now. I guess he doesn't like the iguana or something, but. No, the thing is the fact that the iguana hasn't learned that we're not here to hurt it yet. Um, I'm sure it's very intimidating when we're coming at them with like two hands or whatever to pick it up. It would be nice if he learned already, but I'm aware that with iguanas it's an extremely long and difficult process. Technically it might not even be guaranteed for them to calm down, but we're confident that he can get there because he's definitely improved. Uh, believe it or not. <laughs> he's gained weight. He actually just shed recently, so there's of course a few patches on him, which is seems especially common with iguanas, but it's still something we want to deal with. But he's certainly a species that learns well. He knows that, I feel like, I don't know, this might not be true, but I feel like he knows the spots in the room that are the hardest for us to get him from. Because <laughs> he used to, originally he would run behind the back wall over there, but we could reach him pretty easily. So now, over time, he started adjusting to the side wall because there's a larger enclosure that's harder to get behind and it takes us about twice as long to get him. So whether it's just a fluke or whether he learned where he needs to go for the longest period of freedom. But again, just something about looking at the animal. I don't know, like you can tell he's not just staring into space. The way he moves his head and his eyes uh, to directly focus on certain things, it's really interesting. Like, I don't know, that head turn right there. And again, he's like, he's looking around. I don't know if he's looking for a place to escape or what's going on or whether there's danger around. Probably all the above, but it's really interesting to watch. Also, something I forgot to mention is one of the reasons I love the iguana is he never poops or pees on you. I don't know if this is the first iguana I've ever cared for, so I can't say for any others. I don't know if it's an individual thing or if it's just that iguanas don't use that as a deterrent, because it's annoying. Admittedly, if he did poop and pee, it would deter me. <laughs> so maybe that means he's not being as smart because he's not using his deterrent. And finally, on top is an animal that did pee on me. This is actually the tiniest lizard in the room, so shame on you, big boys. You just lost to this little boy, or this little girl, I mean. This is one of the coolest animals in the room, one that's currently for sale at emeraldscales.com if you're interested. Might already be sold by the time you're watching, but uh, you can check the site out to see if she's still there. This is the little Lebronia, and she's the reason I'm making this video, because she just seems so intelligent. It is ridiculous. I don't understand, I don't know, it's so weird. Uh, everyone that's seen her has agreed, and scientifically I have uh, no idea if this is true. I've done the research on this. This is just a fun video with me talking about and rating them, so <laughs> just for the heck of it. So I don't know if this is at all scientifically correct, but she by far seems to learn the most and be the most aware. The amount of body language and facial expression she can show without having like a face that actually moves is amazing. <laughs> of course it's like opening your mouth, like when she opens her mouth she might be angry or try to bite. Which funnily enough when I took her out she had her mouth open and she was about to bite. But then she just backed off, she's like nah, I don't really feel like it. I don't know why she didn't. One of my favorite things is you can just set her there. Like obviously she's gonna move around but you can just leave her on the desk while you work. Like we were, while we were posting her on the site, she chilled on the desk the entire time. When I think of little lizards, I think of just constantly active, constantly moving animals. And it might be like a mix of the fact that she's small. It like makes her seem even more intelligent than she actually is, just cause she's not some huge animal. Not even huge, just like beardy size or something. I don't know why, it, what it is with assuming that bigger animals will be smarter or more intelligent or whatever. She's definitely broken that stereotype for me, which is why I think it's really cool, because she's really shown me how much variation there is between personality and different species. The way, like, she'll climb just to you and on you. She seems to live less in the moment and she's pooping on me. I feel like she lives less in the moment, like as if she's not only considering and paying, a, paying attention to what's happening right now, but she's like considering what her next move is and obviously learning from the past because she's definitely changed more and gotten used to us super quickly compared to others. And I believe she can be pretty fast, but she just never has a reason to. She's a very slow mover. And I am learning how there are so many different scents of poop today. 
So yeah, just when I'm holding her, like the leopard geckos, for example, they just walk off of whatever. They should have been on the bottom. No offense, leopard geckos, but they'll just be walking on the table. The end of the table comes, they just keep going. They don't look down, they don't look up. And then when they fall, they just keep going. They don't care. But meanwhile, she, when she wants to make her next move, you can tell she looks at what she's going to do. She looks at the other options. She sees what's available and then she goes for it. So right now she has nowhere to go. She's just looking up. But she just feels like such an explorer or such an adventurer compared to the others, even if it's just adventuring around an arm and a table. So I can't imagine what they would be like in the wild. Um, I'm, they would probably be such a cool species to follow. So I'm learning that although I won't be keeping this one, it's definitely a species that I didn't think I'd have interest in, but she proved me wrong for sure. And I love when she just climbs up you. She's like this little like shoulder buddy and she just sits there. So if this was a leopard gecko, it would not be keeping its grip it's just because it would like underest or overestimate like what it could hold itself up on. And she just came all the way around. I can't really see her, but just looking, I feel like she, before she went down my arm, she like peered around over my shoulder, like checked out the landscape and then she went down. Like she ascended the mountain and then enjoyed the view and then left. <laughs> But she's so cool. Hopefully from the b-roll of these shots, you can just tell the difference. So that's my rundown. From top to bottom, I would say Ambronia, Iguana, one of the beardies. I forgot the order. Was it a leopard gecko? So I didn't cover every single reptile, but, but I just thought I'd make a video based on my past couple months of experience with these new animals that I've never worked with. I had never worked with Iguanas or Ambronias. Um, I've worked with geckos for a while, but Beardies even, I've worked for, with beardies for less than two years, even though I've worked with other lizards for like five to six plus, so I don't know why beardies have been such a recent thing, so. So I don't think any of this should really affect, like, what you're gonna buy. Like, I, I love leopard geckos, hopefully it didn't sound like I was hating on them, even if I did put them at almost the bottom of the list. Uh, but it's it's certainly different from other animals available. Like, I don't, even the abronia, it feels like smarter than just some dogs even, or whatever. Which is, a lot of people think I don't like dogs because I compare reptiles to dogs a lot. I really like dogs. I don't want one. Uh, but if you have a dog, like I'll play with it and I enjoy them. I don't like feel disgusted or annoyed if there's a dog around me. I think it's just that I don't like dog owners maybe. Like some dog owners. Like kind of everybody owns a dog. I think what I'm learning is I just don't like people. So there we go. Where do I rank in the list? Let me know. Am I above or below the savannah monitor that's that's what's most important to my ego thanks for watching this pointless video um that's the lizards if you want the abronia you can check it out on the site emeraldscales.com if it's still available if not maybe there's some other stuff that floats your boat on there that you can order uh shipped anywhere in the usa flat rate shipping of 50 bucks abronia can i abronia come here abronia come here wait she actually looked at me she looked oh, come on come here she doesn't know what a finger, she doesn't know what that means. She doesn't care. She's just overlooking the view. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs>